as Joyce comes to minister to us in song tonight. You know, it was a real blessing to have uh, Ron and Ann Bargerstock join the church this morning. And uh, boy, Ron's been through a lot of things in his life. A lot of wisdom there in that old guy, as are most all that are here tonight. And um, Joyce, you go ahead and come on up. And thank you for what you do. Good evening. I just want to say how thankful I am for my salvation and for my church and her pastor and just for the many blessings. In Psalms 46.1, it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Tonight I have selected Till the Storm Passes By. It's one of Sandy and Bob's favorite songs, and I hope you will all be uplifted by it. Nursing home ministry, folks. Amen. Would you open your Bibles up with me this evening to Romans chapter 7?
I truly love Sunday nights for the testimony time. It, it's, uh, it's, it's such an encouragement to be able to hear folks testify for the Lord and what has happened to them. And because, you know, the old saying, misery loves company, right? right. And, 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 but it's very true. It's very true. I think for the, the, the children of God, we need that type of encouragement. We need to be able to hear our brothers and sisters in Christ talk about where they've labored, what God's done for them, because that is such a, a boost. It's such an uplift, especially if you're dealing with trials and tribulations at the, at the moment that's bringing you down. So I really appreciate uh, uh, testimony time, testimony on Sunday nights. I appreciate tonight all the testimony. I particularly note the scriptures that, that Pat shared with us. On That's assurance right there. Those scriptures that Amen. Jesus was giving assurance to us, um, which is a wonderful... And, and Brother Harold, the same way with his testimony. Just, just beautiful assurance that we have that, that Christ hangs on to us. And uh, what a blessing that is tonight. And uh, it's a great thing to remember when you're going through storms, too. Uh, and, and as the song tells us. But with that said, how many of you struggle with sin? <laughs> See, misery loves company. <laughs> and and uh, uh, we do. We struggle, with, we struggle with sin. We struggle with sin like it's a, uh, a, a, an unwanted intruder. And, uh, you know, you can, I can be uh, locked and loaded or loaded and locked, however you want to say it, you know, in the house. And I know when somebody doesn't belong as they approach the house. I know if, I, if they're a stranger, uh, we know those things. But, you know, sin doesn't come at us like that. Sin's, sin's pretty, pretty tricky. Uh, and, and, and it can stalk you just like an unwanted intruder. But you might, be, you might very well open the door for it. Because that's how we are in the flesh. And sin deceives us. Sin distracts us. Uh, I, 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 I've said this so many times that I, I understand beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So the spouse that you have or had, uh, you didn't pick them because they were ugly. <laughs> um, and, and it's the same way in the Garden of Eden. Sin came in an attractive package. Uh, sin doesn't come looking like what it really is. Sin stains us. And, and that's if we're fortunate, amen? Because stains, you can get off. But if, skin's, if sin scars you, you go with that scar the rest of your life. And, uh, and, and those are the difficult ones. Those are the ones that are the results of what the message was this morning. When we don't walk the way God wants us to walk and we do things our own way, we, we stand that chance of, of, of getting scarred by sin. And we're stuck with that. So it, it causes us at times to cry out. And now you may not necessarily cry out like the Apostle Paul did. But spiritually, we have an intercessor, do we not? Amen. And, and, and when we are really plagued by sin and we're tripping and falling on our face, we've, we've, hot, we've, we've swallowed the hook and taken it to the bottom of the pond when it comes to that unwanted intruder of sin. We've been deceived, we've been distracted, we're stained, and now we're in the danger of being scarred. We begin to feel like what the Apostle Paul, we see in chapter 7 here of Romans, if you will, in verse 22, he says, For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. And don't you all, don't you delight in the law of God? I love reading the word of God. I love uh, hearing what I should be. <laughs> uh, I, I, I do, I do. I mean, I do. Thy word have I written in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Don't, you, notice, you notice the scripture, even the scripture sees the flesh. Even the scripture sees the flesh. Thy word, I have written in my heart that I will not sin against thee. No, the scripture says that I might not sin against thee. In other words, the Lord knows we are going to do it, but we're in the fight. Amen. And we're in the fight with, with a great cheerleader called the Holy Spirit. Yes. Um, and, and on our side, not fighting with the Holy Spirit, I hope, but sometimes that happens in the flesh. It's so difficult, though. 
it's so difficult. As we look at the passages of Scripture, we see here in verse 20, 23, but Paul says, but I see another law in my members. Now, remember something again, folks. This is the Apostle Paul. This is Saul. This is that terrible, terrible man, Saul. Anybody, anybody commit sins like Saul did? I haven't. I'm still a sinner. Uh, but I've never committed, I haven't committed the sins that Saul committed. I wasn't out taking Christ's people hostage to have them killed and murdered. I didn't hold a man's coat, people's coats, so they could stone the man of God to death. I didn't do any of those kind of things. Um, but, but, but I see another law in my members, the Apostle Paul says, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. I just said something. Thy word have I written upon my heart that I might not sin against thee. Did I read that out of the scriptures? No. But I can guarantee you I quoted it word for word out of the book of Psalms. I can guarantee you that I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And I can stand here and go on and on and on and quote you scriptures that are written in my heart, but I still sin. And, and as we see this, this is what Paul's trying to say. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. I've got those written in my heart. They're in my mind. Sorry, John. John's probably going, <laughs> it's on now. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin. To the law of sin which is in my members. My members, my fingers, my hands, my eyes, my ears, my toes, my nose, my legs, my arm, my members. Sin is in them. It's called our flesh. It's there. It is there. Praise the Lord. He saves us from our own flesh. Um, that's the whole reason he died. That is the whole reason he died. He saved us from this wretched man that I am. Yes. And, and as, as he did that, we find it so difficult. And sometimes, and I know you all like this, because if you're a child of God, you have the Holy Spirit, and you, you're experiencing the same thing I am, because you got the same God, That's right. the only one. So I know that we're all on the same page with this. But don't you sometimes, you know what, when you have really drifted off the course, don't you sometimes feel like a fake? Yep. I do. Do you get that feeling? And, 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 I, you know, and I think that's where some people get this, well, I think I lost my salvation. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't. You, you kind of feel like a fake. You feel like a fake and, and, and because of your actions or because something you said and, 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 and your attitude and the way you've been and your, and your conversation, your manner of conversation, you feel like a fake. But then you say, you know what? I really, really do love the Lord. Amen. I really do. But look at me. I really do love the Lord. And I know I'm indwelled by His Holy Spirit because this is kicking the snot out of me here. But I've become so derailed. Yes, derailed. If a train derails, is it any less a train? No. If a child of God derails, are they any less a child of God? No. Um, and, 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 and what a wonderful thing that is. And... and I believe it's fair to say that trying to sin less when you're under duress and, 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 and trying to become, when you're under duress and, and you're being tempted and there's stumbling blocks being thrown out in you by Satan, uh, when you're going through those things that, that sometimes you feel like you're pushing water uphill. Yeah. You feel like you're pushing water uphill to try to be Christ-like. You feel like this is impossible. And guess what? <laughs> Without him, it is impossible. You feel like 
you're trying to, you, you get that feeling in some days in your spiritual walk with the Lord in your life, you feel like you're trying to take a, 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 a handful of sand cupped in your hand and go for a walk in a windstorm. <laughs> That's what you feel like. That's what you feel like. Or, or, or perhaps you feel as though you and God are just so, so far apart. So far apart. Every time we feel that way, here's a praise on a Sunday night testimony. And we've already heard it in word. We've heard it in scripture. We've heard it in testimony. But we're going to hear it again. Sin separates us from fellowship, not relationship. Amen? Amen? Sin, our sin separates us from fellowship with God, but not from relationship to God. Um, what a wonderful thing that we see in chapter 6 here, if you'll turn to Romans chapter 6. In Romans chapter 6, I direct your attention to verse 6 tonight. In verse 6 of Romans chapter 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, knowing this. For he that is dead is freed from sin. It doesn't say we're free of sin. It says we're freed, what? From sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, and knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Hallelujah, Brother Harold. <clears throat> Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. I'm dead unto sin. Oh yeah, I sin, but I'm dead unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ my Lord. And that's what the scripture tells us here tonight. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye uh, your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Verse 14 is a blessing. For sin shall not. You see that? That didn't say that. There's no might there. There's no may. The, the word of God says, for sin shall not have dominion over you, believer. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. Amen. Grace. It has, it has no longer dominion over me because I've trusted Christ as my Savior. You see, we, we read a lot in the scriptures in several different places, and I'm going to, in the interest of time, I'm not going to run there, but you've heard, these, you've heard this out of the scripture. Take off the old and put on the... Yeah, you take off the old man, and you put on the new man. And, and honey, hang on. You know, the sun rises earlier. So when the woman of the house gets up early and looking like Mongolia in that great big heavy robe to go out to get the newspaper in the cover of darkness. <laughs> but now as the sun rises earlier, I have to go out and get it. <laughs> Otherwise the neighborhood's going to see her in that, you know, in that state. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> And you know, you, 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 <laughs> you know, I could say, hey, honey, take that robe off. Then they'd see a whole lot more. <laughs> they might like that. But, but, but then they'd see a whole lot more if I tell her, take the robe off. God tells us to take, take it off, but then he tells us something, there's something that we forget. Put on. See, so a, a, a lot of us take off, and, but we forget to put on. And, and th that's, that's a crucial element of what God tells us to try to grow and change and consecrate our life. We can take off, 
Man, I know a lot of people that take off, take off, take off, take off, take off, but they have a real, not such a good record of putting on. So they continually have to take off. Now, you can't just take off. You have to put on. We have to put on. What do we put on? We need to put on some do's. We need to put on some let's. Um, and, and let's look at a, a few of those here tonight. If you'll turn over to Colossians chapter 3 with me. And we're going to go to the troubleshooting section of our owner's manual here. In Colossians chapter 3. This is for those folks when they get saved, which means it's for every one of us that name the name of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior tonight. Not a one of us are exempt from this. I'm going to skip one through seven, but I'm going to start, pick up in verse eight here in this chapter. But now, the word of God says, but now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. I know a lot of people that go to church every Sunday that profess that they're saved and they profess Jesus Christ and they may very well be saved, but I don't even like to be next to them when this thing starts. I got an amen. So somebody else knows people like that too. Um, uh, you see, we're supposed to put these things off. We're supposed to stop that. Uh, Lie not to one another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his what? With his deeds. Deeds, deeds are something that you do. That's an action word. Um, and have put on the new man. See, we have to get that. We have to put that on. Um, i got to trade her robe in for some, from, for some cute jammies if she's going to go out that early after the newspaper in the sunlight. <clears throat> and, and put on the new man, which is renewed in what? Knowledge after the image of him that created him. Yeah. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, seething, bond or free, but Christ in all in all. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing, who? One another. One another. Forgiving who? One another. One another. And if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, also do ye. Yes? And above all things, put on charity. That's that agape love. That's that love that you can only get through Jesus Christ. And if you're a true believer, you possess it. You just got you, you to pull the trigger. Um, uh, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. You notice the let and let and let. Let the peace of God rule in our hearts. That's something that we have to put on. To the which you are also called in one body. And be, and be ye thankful. I know so many unthankful, unhappy, sad, downtrodden, facing the dirt Christians. Because they haven't put on the new guy yet. Let the word of Christ, see that, see that word? Let. Some more lets, some do's and lets. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and in hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. I wonder where you do all that at. Well, I, I, I reckon it is, yeah. I reckon it is church. And whatsoever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. You know, that's, if, some, if we all put that on. Now, you know, it's not Kim telling Billy in the name of the Lord Jesus, I'm taking you out. <laughs> that's not quite what it means. Wives. Ooh, here we go. Submit yourselves unto your own husbands 
as it is fit in the Lord. There's some Christian women that because their husbands are heathens and unsaved, they don't think they need to do that. See, so they'll put off, but they won't put on. They won't put on. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. I'm not bitter that she left me out in the rain. (laughs) Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily, as to the Lord, and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong, and here's the problem with not putting on the new, he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he had done, and there is no respect of persons. That's the difficult side of it. That's the downside. But we can't just take off. We have to be able to put on. How do we put it? Taking off is tolerating your spouse. No. Taking off the old is if my wife would say something to me that needles my flesh, and I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to track her down like a dog. She's not getting away with this. I'm coming. All right? <clears throat> and then I say, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I just took it off, didn't I? But but that's half. That's half. So just tolerating your spouse, just tolerating your children, just tolerating your boss, just tolerating your neighbor and, and not lashing out, that is taking off. But now you have to put on, perhaps by doing something or saying something nice, or encouraging, lovingly, this is putting on. This is putting on. Oh, honey, you're so cute when you get mad. (laughs) Isn't that putting on? Isn't that putting on? Instead of saying, you know what, you know, you want to get mad, I'm going to get mad too. No, you're so cute when you get mad. (laughs) It's just, (laughs) right? <laughs> so that's the other side of it. But the, the but the great thing is what God is telling us tonight through his word is that we struggle with sin. Absolutely. A child of God struggles with sin. When you struggle with sin, that's a proof text that you're a child of God. Yes. I'm not giving you liberty to sin. God forbid, he says, that that we use our salvation or our liberty as occasion to sin. He says, God forbid. But we know we're saved because we're struggling with it. Listen, if you're here tonight and you're lost and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you don't struggle. You sin, but you don't struggle with it. It comes free and easy. Yeah. And you're looking for more. But when you're saved, you struggle with it. You do. And you struggle with it because you've got the Holy Spirit of God in you. Amen. And, and it makes you feel like I just lost the game. Yeah. And God says, you didn't lose the game. I got the scorecard. Amen. And I'm not going to be outscored. You didn't lose the game. But we do have to remember that we can't just take off. We have to put on. And when we put on, it keeps us away from the dangers here in verse 25. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he had done, and there is no respect of persons. This is God's word talking to God's children. Amen. He's not going to kick us out of it. He's not going to write our names off the list. He's not going to tear the page out on us. He's not going to forget to pick us up when he comes back. Um, He's not not going to be late for us. 
Um, you know, he's not going to leave us standing under the eave in the rain for 30 minutes. He's not, he's not going to do those things. He's not going to do those things. What a blessing that is to us tonight. Amen. Amen. We're going to close out with an invitation song. You need to come and pray. Perhaps you're here tonight and uh, you want to become a member of this church. Um, and, and you come forward and uh, you've been saved. You've trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You've had the scriptural Baptist baptism. And, and you, perhaps you want to join the church. Perhaps you just need to come and rededicate your life. Whatever the need is, you come.